Good morning. We'll call this county commission meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please silence all your cell phones and take a moment of silent prayer, please. Thank you. I'll begin this morning to roll call with Commissioner Mike Smith. Here. Commissioner Jeff Culbertson is here. Commissioner Doug Smith. Here. Commissioner Mike Steven. Here. Commissioner Vicki Cause. Here. All present and accounted for. Public comment. I have two people signed up for public comment this morning. Uh, Maureen Hernandez. Would you like to come up and state your name and address for morning. the record? Hi, I'm Maureen Hernandez, and I live in Leavenworth, 737 Deerfield Street. Up to you now. Um, I am here on, on behalf of Safe Sleep, the initiative of Safe Sleep in Leavenworth County. Two years ago, uh, the county gave us a grant for $5,000 to buy uh, cribs and safe sleep sacks for moms who are um, pregnant and need the, that information. Um, unfortunately, the most deaths caused in infancy between the ages of zero and one are unsafe sleep. And so in Leavenworth County, we have a 7% um, death rate in 100,000 births, and the national average is 5%. So we really have an initiative to get this out to our community. Um, this summer, I gave you a copy of the letter that I wrote, but we also will have a community baby shower. And at this community baby shower, we'll have anywhere between 50 and 75 moms who are um, expecting, and we'll give them information not only about safe sleep, but um, mental health, postpartum depression, drug and alcohol use, breastfeeding, all those things that affect a new mom. Um, I also gave you just a flyer that we give out to our community. We have two safe sleep instructors, one from Infant Toddler Services, which is where I'm from, and then Parents as Teachers, which is Kisha Wagner. Um, and then I also gave you a this brochure on all the early learning programs in Lemworth County. Um, I'd like to introduce you, um, Antoinette Veal, and she's going to just share a few more information about Safe Sleep. Hi, I am, my name is Antoinette Beehill. Um, I'm also a Safe Sleep um, instructor. Um, I used to work for DCF. I was a worker, then I got promoted to a supervisor. Um, a little bit about my story, how I became a Safe Sleep instructor. Um, I don't want to say a victim, but my, I have five kids. My second child was um, passed away of SIDS. Um, so I am, if I would have had the education, it's been 19 years um, in April that he passed away of SIDS. Um, if I would have had the education, he didn't pass away in my care, he passed away in a daycare. Um, but um, if I felt that my daycare provider and myself would have had the education provided, um, I don't think it would have happened the way that it did. Um, that's why um, I feel the education provided um, is so impactful to the community. Um, like Maureen said, um, why I'm so passionate about um, not only the... Um, I guess the the powerful um, voice, I guess, behind it. There's a lot of parents, um, especially right now in the economy with the opioid addiction. There's a lot of young parents that get sucked into it. A lot of these moms, young moms, who are getting um, addicted to um, drugs and they end up having kids. Um, and the older generation become the caregivers to these kids. Um, it becomes generational. And when I used to get into the home, um, they co-sleep. Um, a little bit, I'm going to share real quick with you. Um, I'm no longer with DCF. I'm an actual clinical mental health um, therapist now. I work with trauma and crisis patients. But um, a couple years ago, when I was in the home, when I used to abuse, investigate abuse um, and neglect, um, I had a mom who... I had to go and investigate um, a SIDS case. Um, they had three kids. Um, they were low poverty. They were doing everything they could. 
Um, dad was working. They had three young kids already. This was their fourth kid. Um, mom was really, really tired. You know, she was feeding the baby in the home, in the bed. They both fell asleep. She ended up, you know, suffocating the baby. Luckily, they ended up surviving the baby. Um, that's when I got involved, and um, I, I was already a safe sleep, provided the education, provided all of the um, stuff that needed, the crib, the, the, the blanket, everything, um, put all the resources that we were able to provide. And um, two, a month ago, um, she, I ran into her in Walmart, and she gave me a big hug, and she told me thank you. Um, that doesn't usually happen. <laughs> they usually run from people with they are involved with DCF, but she told me thank you. She usually, any friend that she has that's pregnant, she usually um, tells them my story. She says it's very impactful. She really preaches safe sleep, so she remembers ABC. So alone, <laughs> on your back, and clutter-free. So, um, thank you. Yeah, I remember the, I, I, a couple, I know we usually don't talk about My life before this, I was a police officer for 20 years. I handled two of those cases. Yeah. And the training or the equipment, what I believe might have helped. It's a shame it takes a tragedy for us to start training and, and accept that. But I can understand your story because I, I saw that mother for a lot of years after that. Yeah. Thank you. No, we're, no, we're just public comments. Just, public just, comments. Just, I wasn't supposed yeah. to speak, but I before he hit me at the gab, I went ahead and got it anyway. <laughs> is that all you guys had to yes. present? Thank, Thank you. you very much. I think this is one of those things that unless you're personally involved and in have experience with it, a lot of people just don't really know much about it. My best friend's son died of SIDS, and I didn't even know it was a thing before that. Yeah. So, yeah. Another public comment. We have uh, Trinidad. Uh, I'm not going to Try to pronounce your last name. Is it Ramalina? Last name. Could you come forward, please, and state your name and address for the record? Hi. A Trinidad from Air Advocates for Making Right. We're based out of Kansas City, but we work throughout the whole region here. Um, I think I have three minutes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sharing a, a brief on behalf of a few groups, so I'm speaking. This is drafted together with Air Advocates for Immigrant Rights, my organization, also working together with the Sisters of Charity in Leavenworth and the Touch and Watch Network. And then a few other uh, coalition members have signed on at the end I'll read off too. So just in short, um, we strongly uphold the biblical, biblical principle that the strangers among us must be treated as our own, uh, said again throughout Deuteronomy and Leviticus. Um, we are concerned as we, the undersigned organizations, express a profound concern and disagreement with the recent proclamation from the Board of County Commissioners of Leavenworth, Kansas, designating Leavenworth County as a non-sanctuary county. On May 1st, 2024, the commission um, uh, declared uh, Leavenworth, Kansas as a non-sanctuary county. The language really does matter. The language included in the proclamation exhibited underlying feelings of unwelcoming community members and includes, excludes individuals who are integral to our community's fabric. Terms such as aliens, for instance, uh, five studies uh, researching how immigration language shapes how we perceive the issue provides compelling evidence that immigrant labels uh, powerfully shape Americans' attitudes and beliefs about the issue. While the proclamation was read aloud during the Board of Commission meeting, it was concluded that illegal immigration drives human trafficking. This not only misplaces blame, but also ignores broader systemic issues that drive such grave offenses, including severe inequalities and exploitation by traffickers. We believe that our leaders should focus on fostering inclusive policies that enhance community cohesion and respect for all individuals regard, uh, regardless of their origin. Inclusive policies that render immigrants uh, more equal to natives are the, uh, on the path toward improved integrated social relationships in our societies here. Um, we also wish to strongly affirm the decision to Leavenworth County Commissioners who on September, uh, in this case we, we affirmed the decision, we, we applaud you for this part, that on September 20th, 2023, you all struck down the proposal to consider reopening the Leavenworth Detention Center uh, with ICE as an ICE facility, which was something that we were strongly against, and we applaud you for also standing up against that. We urge continued opposition to reopening the detention center um, and to also foster more inclusive policies here. 
it's our belief that no matter where someone came from or how they arrived in the United States, life is of value and they have dignity in the eyes of God. Um, signed on to this message are the Council for American Islamic Relations, CARE, El Centro, Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights, Latinx Education Collaborative, Loud Light, Revolución Educativa, Safe and Welcoming Roland Park, St. Louis Interfaith Committee on Latin America, Showing Up for Racial Justice, KC, <coughs> Sisters of Charity, and Leavenworth uh, Immigration Interest Group. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to ask him a couple questions. Okay. Uh, it, this is kind of a macro question is, Sure. You're asking us to treat all people as as if they're our own and they're here. That's what your statement said. And then your organization is turning around and saying, but we don't want to have a migrant detention center. Because that would put people in prison. There, that yeah. you would want to have oh. the, oh, it I seems see like saying. you would want to, uh, if, if you are okay with having millions of illegal immigrants coming into our country, they're going to have to be housed somewhere. It so seems like it would be impossible. Migrant detention for center is not, not a run. shelter, though. That's just for ICE facilities. It's it's, how, it's ICE's work. So if you had an ICE facility, you're doing ICE's work for them instead of them. You know, well, it just seemed like a little inconsistent there that you want us to just let them flow in here, and then you don't want us to have anywhere to put them. Uh, and, and so ICE facilities are not shelters to house people. That's just ICE's well, that's way what our country's people. using. That's what the Biden administration is using the migrant detention centers for: is to house. Millions and millions of illegal immigrants that are coming into our country. Well, can I ask you honestly? Have you seen that happen here in Livermore already? Are people just well, that's coming? We've waves, been or? trying to prevent that from happening here in Leavenworth County, and that's what we. So I, I completely agree with our decision that we made, mm -hmm. and and I and I also know that there there's a multiplicity of arguments against it. But I just when I, when I'm reading this letter, mm -hmm. I I kind of. Am, and seeing a, a dissident, you know, a little conflict here because you're asking us to embrace having millions of illegal immigrants coming into the country, but you're not wanting us to so, embrace the housing of those illegal immigrants. So, no, that's wrong. It's not housing. It's a nice facility, one. And well, two, we're it not is asking the way bring, we are housing. We're not asking you to bring them. millions of anyone. We're asking you to use your language in a way that makes people feel welcome and not uh, dehumanized. Uh, that doesn't mean millions of people are going to suddenly come here just because you change your language. Okay. And do you agree that uh, that we have seen a, a large uptick in illegal immigration in America in the last five years? What do you mean by illegal immigration? What do you define that as? Okay, a large inflow of migrants at the southern border. That's a fair question. The one thing I want to clarify, this is where it gets complicated internationally. So especially in the past, um, I would say, year or two, large increase in asylum seekers. This is tricky because under international law, everyone has a right to request asylum. Um, to do so in the U.S., you have to cross the border, which in the eyes of the U.S. government is a civil violation. So that puts you in deportation proceedings unless you win your asylum claim. So the U.S. basically tacitly says you're allowed to be here until you finish your asylum process. So you are allowed to be here but they may or may not stay long term if they win asylum later. Actually, winning asylum in this country is very hard, depending on the court, so many people will not ultimately stay long term through that process, your awareness. <coughs> so to say the, a blanket term of illegal immigration is not quite correct. Almost 50 percent of people who are here undocumented, it's, they came here through legal channels and accidentally overstayed a visa. It's very easy to do. The larger issue is more complex than just a simple, like, soundbite. Well, I have a letter that we sent to Senator Marshall's office, and it talks about fiscal year 2020, 21, 22, and 23, and it talks about a crime that's been committed by, you, I call them illegal immigrants, you can call them migrants, you can call them whatever that you want to call them, but they came in, they came in at the southern border or at a border, and they, they don't have citizenship status. Okay. Assault and battery and domestic violence in 2000, fiscal year 2020 was 208. Fiscal year 21, 1,178. Fiscal year 22, 1,142. Fiscal year uh, 23, 1,254. So up from 208 to 1,254. Burglary, robbery, larceny, theft, and fraud. 
2023-864. Driving under the influence, 2020-364. 2023 Homicide manslaughter, uh -huh. fiscal year 23. Fiscal year uh, 23-29. Illegal drug possession trafficking. In 2020, it was 386. In 2023, it was 2,055. Illegal I, entry. I'm familiar with what you were getting Illegal, the point here. Let me finish. This is, this let, is a common me, myth we let, see. Let me finish. Um, finish. We can debate that mind. back and forth. Illegal entry. Illegal entry and re entry. 1,000. Can, okay. So I have the, the floor right, right now. Let me hold finish. On, hold on. Hold on. Let me finish. We're not going to talk over each other. How much more you got, Mike? Just one line. Okay. One line more. Illegal entry, re entry. 1,261 in 2020. And 8,790 in 23. So the point is that we got a huge problem here, and the people of our country are sick and tired of this. And yes, we all embrace legal immigration. I don't think there's one person here that doesn't embrace legal immigration. We all came to this country as immigrants. We do support people and charitable organizations and groups and church organizations that are helping migrants and immigrants. We support that. What we don't support is people coming in and disrupting our civil society in America and in our county. And that's the problem. What do you mean by legal immigration? No, I think this is, this this is, is not the topic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's, 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 let's so, so. Appreciate that's your the problem I have with this. I, I don't have any problem with uh, treating people I mean, some of the language is really good. I don't. I, I, I'm even willing to change it from illegal alien to migrant, whatever you want to call it. But it's the same thing. But as far as being disrespectful, I don't think any of us had any intent to be disrespectful to anybody. I think that's the main point. We did not mean to be disrespectful. I just want to clear up one thing before we finish up here. Um, and you said, you know, language does matter. So I just want to make sure I'm clear on this. Uh, it said, this is this is it is your belief that no matter where someone came from or how they arrived in the United States, mm -hmm. that's your language, right? Mm -hmm. That's the issue we have. Mm -hmm. So They're here we can, illegally. Yes. So we, this is where the term is very confused. No one seems to understand what that means. If you talk to immigration lawyers, how do you come here legally? It's not, I don't think, what most people think it is. There's many routes to do so, but it's also it's mostly for people who have the money to do so. So for people who don't have the money to do so, and plus the waiting line, a lot of people feel forced to do come through the asylum process, which is under international law legal to do. Anyone can request asylum. They may or may not win it later, so they are kind of here. Many people in the past few years have come for asylum. They may or may not be able to stay here long term if they, win, if they don't win the asylum later, but the U.S. government has said you may stay here until that process is resolved. So the, the make it a simple term of legal or not uh, legal is like it's, it's just a misnomer. Um, I understand what you're all saying. Like, you're, you know, your county is your county to make it self-welcoming the way you want it to be. Uh, it sounds like we do have just a basic agreement that maybe there, you're, you're not trying to be offensive to anyone. I see what you're saying. We would love if you want to just meet with our organizations later just to talk about uh, what the language implies. We're not, to be clear, I, I don't think – Millions of people will come here just because you change your language, and uh, I would never want you to make any decisions for your city that will overwhelm your infrastructure. I understand that argument too, um, but yeah, if you want to meet with us later, we can help talk about the language and okay. what it implies. So, all right, yeah. that'd be better. All right, thank you very much for your you contact. Us if everybody you'd like on to. this board took an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States and the state of Kansas. I think we're doing that, protecting our country from domestic and foreign invasion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, do you have any other public comment from the audience? I don't have anybody signed up. So we'll move on to administrative business. Mr. Lothar, do you have anything this morning? Commissioners, um, I had uh, shared with you a request from the, the city of Tonganoxie about, um, I guess, the annexation uh, that we've been going back and forth on. Uh, they requested that we form a two commissioner, two staff <coughs> group to meet with them to, um, I don't know if it's negotiate or discuss this. Um, 
so I uh, told them I would bring that to you because uh, in open meeting, multiple times, the Board of County Commissioners has made it clear uh, their stance on this um, and path forward. And I'm not aware that there have been any changes, so I wanted to, again to bring it up in a public meeting uh, so that you all have the chance to either uh, give me direction that the previous length, the previous direction stands, or that you wanted to somehow amend it and form a, another group to continue to discuss this. I've, reached, I've, I've shared with you the challenges that I think that that has. Yes. But have we received anything on an interlocal agreement or an MOU on this? To um, Because without the city controlling the access management of this property, it's going to hinder the future growth and development of this property. Um, and I think we've made that very clear. And we're getting nowhere. I mean, the... Evergy could have already went through the special use permit process and been down there turning dirt by now, as long as this has been. And we could have granted a special use permit for this. So we're... Commissioners, not, uh, to, my, uh, to my knowledge, nothing has changed. I provide you whenever we receive anything. I provide that to you so that uh, you have it for your consideration. Um, and I don't have anything new to share other than this report. Isn't this a definition of insanity? We keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And I don't have any problem at all having staff reach out and work with them. I think that's exactly what's needed. I don't think two commissioners would. Two commissioners can't make a decision yeah, anyway. Yeah, I don't think that's the right way to go, but I think we do we, need to have. We have been. I mean, again, this has uh, been a long process, and um, we have uh, communications off and on throughout. Provided what uh, we believe is the path forward. I think even the last time they were here, we discussed that openly. So I, I don't have anything new to add. So until we get an uh, interlocal agreement or an MOU, that, that's the only thing that's going to change anything. Correct? That, that's my understanding. Uh, that's been the direction of the board that we either need a road maintenance agreement that, can, that defines who controls access and who servicing the roads or an annexation that goes to uh, the minimum in the middle of the road. I think those are the two paths forward that we've discussed openly in this meeting room. Uh, and therefore, that's been my direction, and that's been uh, the direction that our legal counsel has taken, and that we believe that anything short of the, one of those two options would hinder future development because it leaves up in the air the access to the roadway and also maintenance of the roadway. So we would need to get this before the 30 days that we have putting it back on the agenda. I think we're probably somewhere around 75 days when it's all said and done that we've tabled this multiple times mm -hmm. to allow for. No, I meant for the next time it comes on our agenda, yes. we need it. We'd like to have it a week before at least. Well, it would need to be vetted through legal counsel, um, and then of course our agenda packets go out on Fridays. So mm -hmm. um, we'd like to have everything in on Thursday for that so we have a chance to get it put into the pack. So. Okay. That's all I have. Yes, sir. Um, there was an agreement submitted by our legal counsel to Tonganoxy. Did they ever respond other than a, um, uh, a list of bullet points? Commissioners, you have everything that, we have, that we've received. We've provided it. So okay, so that... Uh, I know they did ask uh, about having a meeting. I, I guess my suggestion would be if we had a, a meeting, would be more like to have a work session with the whole commission present. And uh, uh, if they want to have a work session with their people, it seems like to me, it seems like we we do these extensions and then nothing, nothing happens. happens. No, that's we what don't I'm sit down. And uh, I think I think we've been willing to sit down for quite some time. So uh, has nothing happened since uh, we made the last extension? Commissioners, uh, Mr. Lawfrey's statement to you is correct. You've been provided uh, either the direct message or a synopsis of all communications the county has received in response to reaching out to the city on this issue. Uh, in short, uh, we have not really received what can be considered a response or a request of detailed modifications to the road maintenance agreement that was submitted to the city. 
nor am I aware of any unanswered emails from the city or phone calls from the city. Uh, the county has endeavored to follow your direction to be very open with the city regarding communications, uh, but communication implies a two-way conversation. Let me, let me just say one thing on this. Um, um, I've been down there, and I've reached over backwards trying to see if we can resolve this. I don't want to see this kick down. I would just suggest that they come before us and we make a decision. I don't think a work they can the, – the regular meeting can be the work session, but we need to <coughs> get this behind them and tell them what, what, their, what our final act is so they can do what they need to do and move forward. We don't need to drag this out any longer with meetings. And I'm, I'm a person that likes to have meetings because I like to be able to compromise. But I don't see it happening with this. So – I'd suggest they come up to us, present their case again, and then we take a vote and quit kicking this thing down the road. And we've got a, a date set for that. And I know. So let's, I'd say let it happen. So the request we have, though, from Tonganoxie right now is that we have some kind of a meeting. They, so they have issued a request for a meeting. Mike, that might have been on my, on my watch. I'm the one that suggested having the meeting a while back when I thought we could get somewhere, and I don't see that that meeting is going to do any good uh, right now. I think they need to come present their case, and that could be the meeting, and then let's see what – take it from there and go. But this has just gone on way too long. Well, right. I think when what did this need... request come in? <clears throat> uh, Friday morning. Yeah, and I think Friday that's morning. what we need to address right now is they're reaching out to Mark asking for a meeting. A meeting, so we need to – Respond Not just to that. Meeting that two yeah, and I well, say we respond to that saying two commissioners is not a good uh, idea, but they're more than welcome to uh, converse with staff. Well, we're having a meeting with the fire. Uh, and the work session. That's a work session. Have, but that's what I'm saying. It's a meeting, and and we could have a meeting with the entire board of county commissioners, like sort of like this fireworks uh, yeah. session. And how and many have we had? We, How many have we had in the last 75 days with the guys. city? <laughs> yeah, and that's, I think, Mike, that's the problem is we've done We've that done that. Time. We've had open meetings with the city. I mean, well, I, I think how many wanting times? to have, like, sort of a negotiation type meeting. Well, Mike, why couldn't they do that in an open meeting? Open meeting. Say well, we have a work session. We well, well, we don't have to have work session. How many times have they been at the podium? And we have said what we need. So I say we leave them on the agenda on the schedule well, that they're on. Thirty on. days is up. We vote. Have Mark respond. We don't to hear. We don't get anything back between now and the thirty time. The it thirty stays days on the is agenda. up. Then we just vote on. It stays on the but agenda. They want to have a meeting. They're asking for a meeting. Right, and that's what I'm saying. Have Mark reach back out to him and say two commissioners is not going to work, but anybody but on the with staff. staff. Yeah, they can meet with the surveyor, legal administrator, whoever they want. It's fine. And then they can bring a recommendation. So that's always been open. That's what I thought. Yeah. It's no no change on our end. We're just repeating. You can talk to but, anybody on the county staff. At the staff beginning of this, they wanted to hurry up and annex so they could get this Evergy project going. Yeah. And they didn't want to go through all the special use permit. Well, they could have had a special use permit and already been breaking ground. Yeah. At the county level. So. I do think the last time we discussed this, though, in our meeting, I think there was some comment or, or uh, discussion about having a smaller meeting maybe involving a couple people. yeah which is fine I'm, I'm just no. it's my opinion of the five that we don't include two commissioners in that no. okay. well I, I mean I think the reason they're making the request is because it was mentioned at our meeting okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. and, and, and it was hopefully there would have been an interlocal agreement or an MOU <laughs> to talk about there doesn't seem to be one yeah, prior, so yeah. okay I'd say staff you know what you need to do then Mark yeah, I think it's yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm good alright staff any other administrative business I just um, kind of would like to <clears throat> maybe put on the agenda or have a discussion for this, the, the Safe Kids, just to see whether or not there's any appetite for the Board of County Commissioners to assist with funding this or not. I mean, I know it's not a budgeted item and, and that we're, we're fairly tight, but I think that just maybe on <clears throat> next week in the, in the meeting just to have it on the agenda to have for discussion, just whether or not or, you know, if, if there's even an amount or... What was did they have an amount? Five thousand, I believe, was the was the request for the same as they did the two years ago. But just to see if there's any appetite for it, and if there's not, then you Can know, the alcohol money be used for that. That out. I would have to. But that has that to go through. Probably the, not, um, because that money is very specific to uh, prevention of alcohol abuse or abuse. It seems like it. 
there might be a some there might be a parents connection yeah, there. I wouldn't have any problem with the alcohol money going. Through. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm just saying that, but just to have that discussion, we discuss it. Yeah, do that I don't have, have that on the I don't agenda next week. Just to, to have the discussion. Give Mark, give Mark time to look that up. Right. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. okay, that's that's all I have. Is just I don't I don't want to leave um, Maureen or the and with with out some kind of a th because this is July 27th. That it gives us time and them time yeah. to to know we're good. We're good. where we okay. are. We'll do that. Okay. Any okay. other administrative business? Anybody have? If not, we'll move on to consent agenda. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Nothing needs to be removed. Begin voting with Commissioner Mike Smith. Aye. I vote aye. 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 Motion passes 5-0. Formal board action. Consider a motion to authorize council on aging. <coughs> Director to sign phase 41 local recipient organization certificate for the emergency food and shelter national board program as presented. Morning, Connie. Good morning, Connie. Good morning. Good morning. Um, commissioners, in late April, um, the council on aging applied for a small grant um, through um, the emergency food and shelter program that would provide um, monies for incontinence supplies as well as nutritional supplements like um, Ensure and Boost. We have a number of folks, about 15, between 15 and 20 on very limited income who uh, receive services from the Council on Aging who would be the targeted population for this grant. We did receive that grant and we're hoping to get started um, distributing those monies. However, there is a certificate that must be signed um, in order for us to receive those funds electronically. So that's what you see before you today. Um, it's um, a certification that will follow all of the rules of the grant in order to receive this $2,100 to create this pantry of emergency items. And we just need your approval in order to sign that to release the monies. Do you do you have a board set up that uh, I read through this? Yes. I have no life. Yes. I guess. No, I did um, <laughs> you read through this? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you it mentioned uh, uh, somebody on your board had to be either homeless or homeless in the past or something like that. Um, we are not required to have that board, um, but we do have an advisory board. Um, Okay. Well, yeah. I was just yes. reading through this, and it's kind the of emergency food and shelter program has various yes. different <laughs> avenues. Of, and I, I was at the meeting that, that voted to help oh, fund okay. this. So, I, I, so <clears throat> I'm the representative because nobody wanted to be. Don't look over here. <laughs> <laughs> so you do such a good job, Vicky. Good no, for no, you. I'm I'm just, saying, you know, I also encourage Connie in the future to look at additional. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think that she <laughs> wasn't aware of. of you <laughs> know, because it's a limited amount and it's a limited pool of money that Leavenworth County does receive. But there are multiple organizations that benefit. Um, I don't see for any. the program, and yeah. I was happy to see the Council on Aging apply for the funding this time because I had not seen an application from Council on Aging for it in the past, and so I don't see any problem with this. No, I, I just want to make sure that we're no, we're in compliance. No, when in, we get a grant, it is, just don't we are in. See I, I know that we are in compliance, and that okay. the food and shelter program is at this point in compliance and uh, after Vicky's comments I make a motion to authorize the Council on Aging Director to sign phase 41 local organization certificate for the emergency food and shelter national board program as presented I'll second it motion and a second hate to ask any further discussion <laughs> <laughs> don't let Mike talk begin voting with Commissioner Mike Smith aye I vote aye aye aye, aye. 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 Um, great. grants are great it just helps uh, yeah. The local yeah. tax dollars yep. stretch further. Yep. Thank you very much. much. <coughs> um, presentations and discussion items. I just got a couple. Um, in fact, we got Tim here. He might want to uh, get to drive by and see the aquatic center. Finally got uh, rain out of the way. We're getting some work done out there, which is, is going out in Lansing. And also the affordable housing is on. Mm -hmm. uh, Turning a lot of dirt out there. Now that we've had uh, three weeks of constant rain, good to see that thing moving out there. So, congratulations to Lansing. Very good. Uh, I don't have anything this week in particular. Uh, attended a couple I did of memorial go, sessions. Oh, I, I was going to say the <laughs> memorial session. The yeah. VA was fantastic. I did drive by the aquatic, new aquatic thing last night because 4-H roads closed. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. a detour. Yeah. So, anyway, I had uh, Fairmount Township 
last week, and then I uh, had Mid America Regional Council yesterday. And Commissioner Culverson was on Zoom there. Uh, I think that's about all I had. All right, Mike. <clears throat> <clears throat> wow. Go quick, Vicki. No, I'm sorry. But we had, we had, <laughs> yeah, quick. We had, we had lunch on Thursday, which was, I think, very successful, and I think it was well received by yes, the yes. employees. And, and I want to recognize oh, that's right, and man. announce yeah. that, 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 that it was fully funded by our department heads, that no tax dollars were spent to support the event for the staff. And I think it was well received, and I think that everybody really enjoyed it. And yeah. then following that, I had a meeting with Frank White III to discuss some uh, further trying to work toward getting some type of transit uh, provided in Leavenworth County. And I think that's it. Motion to adjourn. Uh, can I say one? No. no. I got one thing to say. I was looking Start at the, uh, went to the employee appreciation, and, and I was only briefly able to come because I had to go work on a train. But I just want to express appreciation to Vicki for all mm -hmm. the donations and everything that you did for the employee appreciation yeah. and for all the committees that you do serve on. You volunteer for so many committees, and, and it is appreciated. It's my pleasure. Mm -hmm. so, I think she enjoys us. I do enjoy it. appreciate what you're doing. I enjoy here, here. it. She enjoys us. I just always offer out everybody else if they want to do that. <laughs> they're more than welcome to. I don't want to act like it's only me. So. Well, it's, we don't want to. It's no, we don't want to deny you this pleasure. <laughs> yeah. But thank you, thank you, Mike. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and second. Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Work session in five minutes or fifteen. No, uh, five. 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 <laughs> five minutes. Yeah. Commissioners, um, I don't know if, if everybody from the. That's why I was wondering. Here. I did tell him it would be around 10 o'clock. Yeah, okay. Why don't we call him a break? Yeah. Oh, then I gave Joe. We don't schedule these things. We don't know what else is going to be on the agenda. So Let's just come back at 10 o'clock. Tim, sorry. I didn't know about that. I wouldn't have had you up this early. Or, or we, we could have just an open discussion. We'll reconvene at 10 o'clock. <laughs>